Hey everyone, my name is Ivana and I'm going to take us through this week's lesson. We are at lesson 14 and the title for our lesson is Ephesians in the Heart. And our memory text is from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. It says, For by grace ye have been saved through faith in that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of worth, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. The lesson writer begins the lesson by telling us about the London Eye and it tells us that it is a tourist attraction which visitors to London claim and from there they are able to see the vast landscape of London from the Houses of Parliament to the historical palaces and the historical cathedrals. And just like the London Eye, the letter to Ephesians stands in relation to the rest of Paul's letters. And even though it isn't the, the longest or fullest of his writings, it offers a breathtaking view of the entire landscape. And as the wheel turns, you get a bird's eye view of one thing after another. In his letter, Paul is not focused on matters of, of local concern, but rather it reads as though he was addressing believers everywhere and Christian churches wherever they exist. The letter's timeless feel allows the breathtaking view Paul offers to invade our lives, to invade, invade our worlds, and even to invade our thoughts. This week's study is a synthesis of the entire epistle to Ephesians, an attempt to highlight and weave together all the major themes found in the six chapters of Ephesians. The Sunday section summarizes Paul's view of God's eternal and historical plan of creation and redemption. It covers the full span of salvation history from eternity past through to God's grace-filled actions in Christ to eternity future. Monday section summarizes Ephesians chapter 2, which depicts humanity's grim state of sin and death, and it is a state that is without hope a state that is without Christ, and a state that is without God in the world. But Paul and the Bible generally does not end with this grim depiction. Rather, he details the foundational elements of the gospel, the mystery of God, which brings hope to humanity. It is in and with Christ that God resurrects us and exalts us to his sanctuary in the heavenly places. Chapter 3 which is revealed in Tuesday section, highlights God's mystery of the creation of the church. Moving on to Wednesday section, which is a summary of Ephesians chapter 4, it explains how God's twin purposes, which, is, which are unity and faith, are achieved when God's children from the entire world are united in true piety in the use of their spiritual gifts in mission. Moving on to Thursday part, which summarizes Ephesians chapter 5, it's it emphasizes that unity cannot be achieved without abandoning the past exaltation of I. It is achieved only if we embrace our new, our new identity and walk in Christ. As we conclude, Friday section calls us to see that the church is a united army well equipped for its mission of exclaiming the Lord's gospel of peace. And it is only peace of and in Christ that we are assured of life and of success because victory is assured in Christ. As I conclude, I'd like us to ask ourselves this question. What important truths embedded in Ephesians should continue to shape our lives as believers? What important truths embedded in Ephesians should continue to shape our lives as believers? Thank you for listening and be blessed.